The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Today, the fourth part of five installments rekindling the fires 19 centuries old. Not only the flames in men's hearts, but the smoldering of Mount Vesuvius, which after centuries of inactivity suddenly erupted in 79 AD, wiping out cities, farms, cattle, and people in 24 hours. The time now? One day before that volcanic fountain of burning gas and rocks bursts into the early morning sky, and Pompey is no more. The lion is loose. Come with me. There's no place to go. Uh, inside his cage, quick. And now, what are we going to do? We're shut inside the lion's cage, and he's outside. At least we're alive. drama is entitled Danger, Love, and Death. It is based in part on Bulwer Lytton's classic novel, The Last Days of Pompeii, and has been especially adapted for the Mystery Theater by Gerald Keene. It stars Russell Horton and Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Imperial box of the great amphitheater on a hot August afternoon, along with some 10,000 citizens of Rome and Pompeii. A lion has just run fearfully from the arena. The crowd is hissing and stamping its feet. For centuries, Romans believed blood the most precious gift they could offer their gods. And for centuries, the convicted walked by the Imperial box crying, Ave Imperator, Morituri te salutant. Hail, Emperor, we who are about to die, salute thee. This day, one of the condemned did not have to speak those words. I was that one person, Marcus Aurelius Rufus. Arrested for a murder I could not have committed. Sentenced to face a lion in the arena. And now, free. Because the lion would not face me. I could look out across the arena into the imperial box and see my friend Diomed listening to a very angry sentence. Diomed, I must be insane. How could this have happened to me? Senator, you forget. It happened to me as well. Uh, three days ago, I come to your house for a party you're giving for Marcus Rufus. Suddenly, he runs from your house. Later that night, I'm told, he stabbed a young priest to death in the cemetery. And then, what's his name, makes a formal accusation. Arbaces, the Egyptian high priest. I never liked that man. Cold eyes, staring. Uh, however, he and the centurion are valid witnesses, right? So, the Senate decrees Marcus is to face a lion. Open and shut. Well, one would think. Until yeah. Lydia, the blind servant girl. Until she comes here and tells me there's another witness to the murder. Now, what am I to do? A senator is only a servant of the people, you know. I know that. So, I bring Marcus into the arena, turn the lion loose, and the craven animal won't even look at him. He crawls away. A sign from the gods that Marcus is innocent. Oh, nonsense. The accused is innocent if, in hand-to-hand combat with a lion or tiger, he wins. No one is innocent by default. And uh, where is that sister of the deceased, that uh, Oriana, who was screaming and yelling here? Oh, she went down below to be with Marcus Rufus, now that he's in the clear. It is not definite yet. 
I'm far from satisfied. But you wouldn't vote that Marcus be faced with another lion, would you? A man cannot be brought to trial twice for the same crime. The gladiatorial games today are a shambles. Marcus comes out and all I can see is the lion's tail. And the people don't like it. Listen with an open mind to this Calvus when the centurion brings him here. I know Calvus to be an honest man. A tavern keeper, an honest man? <laughs> Did I hear someone say Calvus? Uh, we're waiting for him, our bases. Uh, where is this Calvus whom I'm supposed to have locked up? Uh, the centurion will fetch him. If the man is there. Oh, speak of the devil. Oh. Calvis, you, you look a little worn. I'm, I'm glad you're here. No more than I am. It's been a strain. Diomed transfers, it's good to see you. You uh, know the senator? Oh, yes. I've attended him occasionally in the tavern. Senator, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for having rescued me. You can thank Lydia, the slave girl. I, uh... Found this man in the gallery below the Isis temple exactly where the slave girl showed me that he was imprisoned. Here are your keys, high priest. Oh, what's the high priest doing here? I, I, I don't want to talk to him. Uh, you found this wine merchant in my temple. I have no idea how he got there. No, Senator, if you have no further need of me... None whatsoever. Dismissed. Calvus, come here. Your message said you saw the murder of the young priest with your own eyes. Ah, yes, I, I did, Senator. I swear to it. You saw who stabbed Epicides? Oh, I did, Senator. You have my word. And it was not Marcus Aurelius Rufus. No, it, it was not. Enough. We shall hear your testimony at a more suitable time and place. Our bases of Egypt, you have heard the charge. What do you have to say? I still say I saw Marcus plunge the dagger. You lie! It was you, our basis. You stabbed that young priest to death. I confronted you with that not five hours ago in your temple. You wanted me to have gold in return for silence. This is not the time or place. When I followed you down to those dungeons to fetch the gold, you locked me into an airless room. You left me to die. I said enough. We shall hear your testimony at a suitable time and place. Our basis. You wish to answer? At the proper time and the proper place, I'll answer. Marcus, how long are they going to keep you here? Until the Senate decides whether I'm to be set free or not. At least you're not locked up and I'm allowed to visit you. Oh, Marcus. Can you ever forgive me? My darling Oriana, you were so overcome with grief at the death of Epicides, you didn't know what you were saying. But to accuse you, how could I have done that? Oh, that entire night was insane. Now I'm sure I was poisoned, but why and by whom, I've no idea. I've been up in the Imperial Box to plead with Senator Publius Cornelius... And while I was there, there was a hue and cry about a wine merchant who had actually seen my brother killed. Not... not old Calvus by any chance? Yes, that's the name. The centurion was sent to fetch him, but I don't trust him. You don't? Why? He came to see me at the crack of dawn today, said he had evidence to sell me and to name my price... I thought he was lying, and I shut him out of the house. Oriana, you must calm yourself. Now, you go back upstairs to the Imperial Box. Go up this way and around. It's safer than crossing the arena. Uh, I'll walk you along the arcade to the steps. There he lies in his cage, poor creature. <laughs> He's more frightened of me than I am of him. I don't think he likes you. Hmm. He likes me well enough to have spared my life. Didn't you, old boy? Uh, he, he, he's broken out of his cage. Oh, Oriana, don't, don't move. Now, stand where you are, behind the door where it swung open. Dang it! Now inside his cage, quick! Oh. 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 Now what are we going to do? We're shut inside the lion's cage. And he's outside. At least we're alive. The lion loose only added to the confusion. The guards subdued the beast quickly and released Oriana and me. No one knew what to do with me because the senator had ordered the games to a halt. And all of Pompeii was sitting in the bleachers with no entertainment. 
They were getting angrier by the minute. They want to throw our bases to the lions. I smell a riot. I smell it coming. Senator Publius Cornelius. I, I've said as many guards as I have all over the amphitheater, but the people won't be quiet. Rumor is spreading like wildfire. Rumor about what, Centurion? Speak up. Well, they know Calvus was imprisoned by the high priest and that the high priest is hiding something. They're shouting they want our bases to explain. I'll speak to them. Make room for me at the edge of the balcony. Hear me! Hear me, all citizens of Pompeii! I am our bases and I wish to speak to you. Citizens, who do you see here? This man! Stand up, Senator. This man is your Senator Publius Cornelius. Next to him is his friend, Diomed, whose ships have brought all of us precious cargoes from many countries. And this man here is Calvus. Hear me, I say! Hear me out! This man, Calvus, came to me. Threatening he would make a charge against me, he has now made, unless I would buy his silence with gold. I beg you, boy! Peace, peace, peace! I beg of you, hear me out! Go back to Egypt! Yes! I am an Egyptian, a stranger here, and for that you may despise me! The crowd became unruly, accusing our bases of murder and of attempting to kill Calvus. Yes! I decoyed this man, Calvus, to a place under the temple, pretending it was filled with gold, resolving to detain him there until the true criminal was punished. I meant no worse than that. Can anyone here in this great amphitheater blame me for trying to protect my reputation, my life? High priest, they believe that Calvus is telling the truth. Where was this Calvus when the Senate was reaching its verdict? Why didn't he come forward then with the story that it was another man that plunged the dagger into my young priest's back or into his heart? Whatever his story is, I love that boy, that happy side is, as if he were my own. Calvus would have you believe it was me. When I proclaimed the guilt of Marcus Rufus, why did not Calvus come forward and accuse me of lying then? I suggest to you that this wine merchant you see standing here is more interested in the color of gold than in the ring of truth. Listening to this harangue in this century, no Arbaces is indeed guilty of murder. But in the century of this story, no one could be sure. In the words of that great Roman lawyer, scholar, and statesman, Cicero, it is the nature of a scoundrel to deceive by lying. How far from the truth will the people of Pompeii be misled? Or is there a greater retribution in store? We shall know more when I return shortly with Act Two. Though the specter of death looms over Pompeii, man continues on his brutal and selfish way. Love, greed, jealousy, even murder are enacted by the characters we have met. Our bases, the high priest, will stop at nothing to gain his ends. Marcus Rufus, unjustly thrown to the lions. The two women who love him, the high-born Oriana and the blind slave girl Lydia, all playing their little parts before the curtain descends for the last time. Lydia. Lydia. I didn't expect to find you here at the gladiator's entrance. I was just on my way to the imperial box. What happened to you before? I was unable to return to your home, mistress, because I was locked up by that high priest. You too, Lydia. How many years I thought he was my friend. Then, without any warning, he destroyed all my faith in him. You are easily deceived, Mistress Oriana. Lydia, 
Because you are blind, it does not give you the freedom to speak to me in such a fashion. I know that Marcus thinks highly of you, but you must not forget, you are a slave purchased for his household. Friendship is one thing, license is another. Out of friendship, I have been happy to teach you history and art. Open your eyes. I don't wish those favors any longer, mistress. What? Do you really care about me, mistress? Or am I not just an experiment? Well, I'll do my work carefully, silently. But I do not wish for your friendship. I cannot understand why you are so angry with me. I should have thought now that your master, Marcus Rufus, is at last free from false accusations and the danger of death. You would be happy, not bitter. You can be happy, mistress. Now Marcus Rufus is alive, he will marry you and you both will live in harmony and wealth. I have nothing to be happy about. Is it your blindness that is speaking? I am grateful that I am blind. At least I cannot see the expression on your faces. The delight you have in each other's company. Little Lydia, don't tell me. Are you jealous? I am nobody. Who looks at a slave? What am I useful for? To draw the water for the bath? To carry food to the atrium? To deliver messages? Clean stone steps? A slave is a nobody. No one can change that. And no one cares enough to. My only fortune is I am unable to see the smug faces of... Roman nobility, Mistress Oriana. Stop that. <gasps> yes. A slave can be slapped any time. Beaten. Not another word. I have done more in this town to awaken people to inequities. I won't have such talk from you. <sighs> what have I done? What have I said? My dear child, there's a wonderful life in store for you, even without your eyes. There is the sound of the lyre, the whisper of winds, the song of the birds. Life has much in store for you. I am not a child. I am a woman. My dear, you have a wonderful life to look forward to. I hate what I'm doing. I hate every day. But I do not hate him. I love him. And be because I am a slave, he will never know. Confusion reigned in the amphitheater, and I took advantage of it. Why wait a moment longer for the senator and the senate and the authorities, wherever they are, to decide my fate? I walked out into the middle of the arena, carrying a torch. The sun was going down. A hush fell over thousands. It didn't matter whether I was Roman or Greek. I was a wronged man. Fellow citizens, we have all seen a lion terrified. I say to you, it has nothing to do with my guilt or innocence. I say to you, isn't it more likely that the gods about us have decided they will no longer tolerate our primitive, barbaric, senseless punishments? That lion felt the very presence of the angry gods and fled to hide in shame. Are we mortals more stupid than the beast? No, 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 no. Then let us have no more justice meted out by wild beasts. Master, you sent for me? Yes, Lydia, I did. Now, you accompanied Oriana back to the Imperial Box? Yes. We both heard you speaking to the people from the arena. Oh, it was inspiring. Everyone is talking about it. Did the centurion bring you here? No. He just whispered to me that you wanted to see me. I found my own way without any trouble. Oh. I still cannot get over how you managed to get around without eyes. You have great courage. Do you think so? I've been sitting here waiting for the verdict and thinking how much I owe you, Lydia. The centurion told me it was you who rescued old Calvus who gave new evidence to clear me. Oh, I never thought I'd be grateful to him. But there it is. 
You have done more, far more, than any slave has ever done for any master. You risked your life. I would do it again. For you? Now, did Calvis make a specific accusation? Did he actually see someone kill Epicides? Oh, yes, he did. Who? The Egyptian priest, Abasis. Oh. Abasis? Yes. I have vowed to Jupiter, the Lord of Justice, I shall make to him daily sacrifices. If Calvis's word is believed, can you are set free? Lydia, I sent for you to thank you. But I realize there is no way I can ever reward such faith. Reward? Oh, Oh, your cheeks are wet, child. Why are you crying? (laughs) Through happiness, I guess. Master, you will not think it foolish or forward of me if I ask to touch your face. Because I know you only through the sound of your voice. If you could permit such a liberty, my fingers to find your face, that would be reward enough. It's getting dark. And still, the crowd is remaining in their seats. I'm having the torches lit. Senator, how much longer will we have to await the Senate's verdict? They're they're taking so long to agree. To agree to reverse the decision? Yes. At least the crowd seems to have calmed down. Hey, makes a nice picture. You see? Four pairs of wrestlers at the same time. Who, please? Do you have any doubts as to the outcome of the Senate vote? No, no, not really. I recommended Marcus be restored his freedom and that Calvus' testimony of the Egyptians' guilt be examined carefully. Ah. Uh, Oriana will be relieved. It's been a certain strain for her. Oh, uh, by the way, where is she? Well, I don't see her. It's strange. She was over there talking to Calvus. Well, now neither of them are here. Uh, Senator, I have news. Well, then approach and tell me. I hope it's news of the Senate's decision. Uh, Senator, Marcus Aurelius Rufus is to be freed. Calvus to be taken into custody for further questioning. And what of the Egyptian? Well, all things being equal, sir, it being his word against the wine merchants, the uh, edict of the god Chaos is to be fulfilled. Uh, Chaos... That means... That means, my dear, dear man, that the Egyptian is to be tested in the arena. Centurion, have your beast ready. Now, we have a crowd pleaser. How wise old Cicero was when he said, the crowd values few things according to truth, but many according to reports. Centurion! Where is our beast? He's the high priest. I thought he was here in the box under guard with you, Senator. No, oh, you idiot! You are in charge. Why didn't you see which way he went? He just vanished. Disappeared. We'll you get him, Senator. You say. I don't like it. He knew we were waiting for word from the Senate. I don't like it at all. Ah, Marcus. Hail the conquering hero. Oh, dear boy, I'm so relieved it's all over. But yes, Thanks to little Lydia. Oh, come into the box with me, child. Of course, I haven't any official word yet that I'm exonerated. Just the crowd. Publius, Senator, uh, please, tell this young man his days of horror are over. On behalf of the Senate, Marcus, I apologize for what you have gone through. Officially, all charges against you have been dropped. Oh, Master, I knew it. I'm so happy. I think we all realize the fidelity of your servant, Lydia, and what a large part she played in the turn of events. So, on her behalf, I shall recommend to the Senate a reward of 200 sestercia. I don't know what to say. Oh, wait until I tell my lady. Oh, where is Ariana? My lady? Mistress? Ariana's not here. I... I wonder if she left at the same time as the Egyptian. What's that? 
our basis was here and he's gone too? Careless security. I put him on his honor to remain until we'd heard word from the Senate. No, 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 no. Oriana would not have left with him. Not, not of her own free will. She told me and she told Lydia she suspected him. Of what, Marcus? Well, I'll be frank. Of wanting to get me out of the way so he could persuade Oriana to be his wife. Oh, that's ridiculous. He actually kidnapped her several days ago, the day of the quake. I got her away. He, he has a strange power. We in Athens call it hypnoticos, which means put to sleep. He can make people actually believe what he wants. Temple, I... Lydia? What did you just say? The temple. What of the temple? The high priest. He could have taken her there, Mr. Zariana. Where, child? To the same subterranean gallery where Calvus and I were locked up. Well, isn't it possible the high priest could be hiding her down there? Lydia, you found your way out. Can you show us the way in? The torches in the amphitheater were extinguished. An unsatisfied mob of people filtered out. There were mutterings everywhere, dissatisfied murmurs. Where was Arbaces? Why hadn't he been put to the lions? Arbaces was an evil man and should be destroyed. And then, someone I knew spotted me and Lydia. And the cry went out, follow Marcus. He knows where the Egyptian is. Follow Marcus. Dawn was breaking by the time I reached the temple of Isis. And there he was, in front of a crowd. Accuse me, an anointed representative of the goddess Isis, of running away from my duty. I stand here on the steps of this temple, and I challenge any man in Pompeii, any face I see before me in the torchlight, I challenge him to accuse me of wrongdoing. Ah, there is my friend Marcus. I say to you, Abbasis. I care not what the state or the senate charge you with. That's not why I'm here. You care not because you could not charge me, Marcus Aurelius Rufus. I came here looking for the woman I love, Oriana. Now, where is she? I have no idea. You lie! Think what you like! Author Bulwer Lytton. The eyes of the crowd beheld a vast vapor shooting from the summit of Vesuvius in the form of a gigantic black pine tree. The trunk all blackness, the branches all fire. Then the mountain cloud rolled towards them, dark and rapid like a torrent. I shall return shortly with Act Three. It is unlikely that many within the sound of my voice have ever been near enough to an erupting volcano to know its cruelty. Whether we can adequately recreate for you the horror of flaming gas and rocks bursting thousands of feet into the air, the noxious fumes poisoning the lungs, the ash fallout smothering a city. Whether we can do dramatic justice to that tragedy, I don't know. I do know that as our curtain rises, Death itself panics and stampedes the people of Pompeii. Where is Oriana Arbaces? Where is she? I told you I had no idea. You accused me of murder once. 
This time I shall do it if you don't tell me this instant what you've done with her. Let go of my throat. Let go. Our bases. Oh, where is she? Mikey, stop. You'll kill him. Strangle the truth out of him. Our bases. Where is she? Mikey, stop. If you choke him, how can he stop? Oh, 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 the girl is right. My neck. It's, it, I tell you, I know nothing. Lydia. No, Lydia, nothing. what's the matter? Oh. Uh, uh, something in my nose. Throat. Air. I can't. Oh. Mr. Breen. Lydia, you can thank Jupiter. You're spared the hideous sight of a black cloud obscuring the sun. You're right. It, like a knife in my throat. He hit my hand, Master Marcus. And I'll find the way to the underground gallery. Is, is that where you think Oriana may have been taken? Oh, I hope so. For your sake. people of Pompeii. That woman back there on fire and too late for anyone to save her. Hey, come along, Senator. We must hurry. And, and that old man who had fallen in the street. I, I tried to help. Well, he was obviously dead. We couldn't do anything for him. <laughs> and his daughter convinced he was still alive and trying to lift him up. I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get through all this alive. It's a madhouse. Senator, you come along with me and you'll be quite safe. I, I have three sellers, one out to the other. Oh. You can hide there until these cinders stop falling from oh. the sky. Oh, dear mate, I am eternally grateful. I'm sure my daughter Julia is yeah. having the servants bring food and wine for all. She's a very capable girl. Uh, last week, that earthquake, remember? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. You remember yeah. the forum was badly damaged. Uh, I, if you could walk a little slower, dear mate, it's a bit hard for me to keep up. As I was saying, Julia, the, oh. the, the moment she felt a tremor, she took everything that was breakable, the, the statues, the pottery, even the woolens hanging on the walls. Anything that could get damaged. Julia took them all down and placed them on the floor. Nothing got broken. I'm glad I sent my wife and daughters back to Rome. It, it's too hot in Pompeii. You know, August is a terrible month. My wife and daughters are visiting my mother. Is it much further, dear man? No, 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 my friend, not much. And you just keep in front of you the thought that in a few moments, you and I shall be safe in my cellar. With a cup of wine. Drink our thing. Thanks to Zeus and wait, Jupiter. Wait, 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 wait a moment. Let, let me see on this curbstone. Oh, oh my heart. Uh, dear man, I, I don't think I can walk much further. It's uh, too hard for me to breathe. Terrible gas. It's vile. Blackness everywhere. Oh, oh. Certainly, man. Just, just sit, uh, sit a while. Oh, this. Cinders are falling on me. They close up my eyes like black snowflakes. Dear man, dear man, go. Good friend, go. I, I cannot. I cannot move. This way, Master. Turn here. Oh, you're fantastic, Lydia. The way you go along all these passages, just like feeling the walls with one hand. How can you tell? I, I, I can't even see where I'm going. I have never seen where I'm going. My hands have always been my eyes. Another right, and then there'll be the door. Just, just one door? The door to the gold vault, where Calvis and I were confined. There are other doors. I'm going to start calling her name. If Oriana answers, we'll know which door. Oriana? Oriana? This is the door. It's open. But of course. The centurion unlocked it to release Calvin. Oriana, are you in here? Here, hold, hold on to my hand. And we'll walk to the far end. It's very long. Now, oh, careful of those sacks. They're all over. Great Zeus, all those gold coins. This 
There's more here than Nero himself ever had. I don't think Oriana is here. She would have heard us. Oriana? Unless she's been injured. Oh, I never thought of that. It's a few steps further on where I escaped. There's a hole that leads to the street. Shh. Oriana! Oriana! No. No, she's not here. Oh. Will you lead me to some of the other rooms? Lydia, we've tried every door that was open. I, I, I've called her name a thousand times. She's not here. Oh. The only other place I can think of looking is... House at the end of the Via del Abadanza. Her place, the, the house of the marble fawn. Do you wish to take my hand to lead you out? Ah, no, no, no. My eyes have become used to the dark now. Uh, left here, four yards right. Uh, and then this goes to the corridor where the gold vault is. Uh, who's that? Who, who are you? What are you? Where are you going? Let go of me. I haven't done anything to you. It's Calvis. I know his voice. Calvis, don't you know me? Lydia? <laughs> Lydia? Calvis, what are you doing here under the temple? Oh, Marcus Rufus, is it you? If you've come here to hide, believe me, it's not safe. I I came here to get some gold. Oh, that, that gold in there? I thought of it right away. After what that Egyptian has done to me, I think I deserve it. Don't waste your time grabbing gold. Pompeii is falling apart up there. What good are a few coins going to do you if you can't get away? Let's hurry, Master. Oh, I am going to load myself up with as much as I can carry. Why not? Oh. He would have let me die down here. So I'm taking what I can get. And Lydia, bless you and... Thank you for saving my life. Calvin, don't go in there. It's not safe. He's gone. Oh. I didn't want to hear you. If all that smoke and that poison air comes down from the street, he'll die. Oh, why wouldn't he listen to me? When a man has gold fever, there's no cure. No. Our problem is to find the Via del Abadanza to Oriana's house. Sure, we're on the right street. We must keep walking straight. Oh, what is it that keeps falling on me? It, it smells so strange. Thick and warm. They're ashes from Vesuvius. Now, uh, don't, don't get panicky. Just brush them off as I'm doing. When they fall on you, brush them off. I can't see them. There's nothing to be frightened of. I, I have to brush them off myself also. Oh, what would I do without you, Master? What would I do without you? I'd never find my way in a million years. Oh, uh, be, be careful. Uh, Jerry, oh. uh, step to your right against the doorway. It's, it's empty. The two runaway horses. And anybody know me, I am Senator Publius Cornelius. Please, somebody help me to my house. Well, 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 I don't believe it. <laughs> if it isn't the great senator himself. <laughs> centurion, oh my, my dear Centurion, just the man I want to see. Why, well, you want to see me? <laughs> I should have thought I was too much of a, an idiot for you to have anything to do with me. What? 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 what, what? Oh, don't you remember how often the great Senator Publius Cornelius had to put up with that, that stupid centurion? What are you saying? Nice to run into you, Senator. <laughs> Enjoy yourself sitting by the side of the road. Please, 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 centurion. Don't leave me. We're here. This is the house of the marble fawn. I'm sure of it. I wouldn't know the place. 
It's gutted. I, you're sure, Lydia? See, you're here. Against the wall. The bell. Oriana? Let's walk forward in a straight line. Oh, the pity of it. A beautiful garden turned into rocks and ashes. Oriana? Uh, Lydia. Lydia, where did you go? I, I, I can't see you. Walk towards me. Uh, Do you see where I am? I'm sitting at the fountain. Can you see the marble fawn? Is it still there? Yes. Yes, this is her house. The marble fawn. I have my hand on its little face. Oh, Lydia, you did find her house. Oriana! Oriana, it's Marcus! Marcus! Is that you? Yes! Yes, where are you? Be careful! Something's giving way! Tiles away on your side. Yes. Marcus, uh, you'll be all right. We'll have you out. Mm. There's his arm. Oh. Lydia, help me pull out his arm. Yes, yes. Let's see. Slowly. Yes. yes. I see his shoulder. Oh, look. This poor face. Oh. His eyes are closed. Oh, Mrs. Oriana. What God are you praying to? There. One side of him is free. Oh. Marcus, can you hear me? Uh, uh -huh. He's opening his eyes. Oh, oh Lydia, keep pulling me. Yes. We'll have him out. Oh. Uh, Oriana. My love. Lydia. Master, can you move your arms? Uh, oh, yes, I can. Uh. <laughs> if I felt like making a joke about the... Uh, falling on me, I'd say, uh, that was a blow. Oh, I don't know what to advise. Here it is, mid-afternoon, but it's black as night. Except for those flames shooting out of Vesuvius, like flashes of lightning. I could perhaps find some back roads. If we take the main roads out of Pompeii, we'll be trampled to death. Every street is jammed with crowds screaming, running. Death all around us. What is there left to do but to pray? Mr. Ariana, I have faith we shall live. There must be a reason that the three of us are here, together. And that reason must be life. Lydia speaks wisdom. At one time or another, each of us has saved the other's life. Master, if you hadn't purchased my servitude from the tavern keeper, Calvus... Who knows where I'd be now? Then let us three remain together. Perhaps we shall live through this. Perhaps not. But at least we shall not die alone. Picture, if you will, the terrified city of Pompeii and Roman citizens trampling one another underfoot in desperation to escape. See in your mind's eye a mountain turned pyromaniac, its open mouthed furnace spewing out fiery exhaust. It is fire against flesh, and there can be but one consequence. I shall return shortly. When next we have your ear, it will be the last day of Pompeii that fateful August day of 79 A.D., in which the last rites over a buried city are performed. A city which lay in secret for centuries and was not disinterred for almost 2,000 years. Yet our story does not end unhappily. I look forward to telling you about the miracle of those who survived. Our cast included Russell Horton, Patricia Elliott, Earl Hammond, E.V. Juster, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now a preview of the fifth day in our special series, The Last Days of Pompeii, The Buried City. Lydia, look, look at you, your leg, what happened to it? It, it will be all right, Master. Mistress Oriana, 
Is that... Is that you? Oh, sweet Lydia. Oh. I thought... I, never mind. You're safe. Marcus told me about you and that baby. The gods were with me. I managed to crawl up with the baby safely. Oh. And the mother came and took her. Welcome to the end of the world, my friend. Do you admit there is no time? Now, where are your boats? I leave life with a taste of grape on my lips. Mariana, I've never seen him like this. Your daughter, Julia, your wife, are they safe? Uh, they are dead, Marcus. When I reached my house, I went down to the cellar. Death had arrived before I did. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.